One look at the airplane shows that this is going to be a challenging flight, but I already knew that from my briefing the night before. So I'm here by a hotel room in Louisville, Kentucky, and looking at some forecasts for getting back to Frederick, Maryland, and I find myself in a situation that you frequently do, in that there's not complete agreement. It's not an easy go or no go decision. So here's what I was looking at between Louisville and Frederick, an air met for ice over the Appalachians. But looking at the National Weather Service's forecast icing potential tool, it looks like I can go above any threat of ice. But is that a good decision? I reach out to a couple of experts. Dave Hirschman flies everything from small experimentals to warbirds. His take, it looks doable. An air met for icing is not necessarily a, no, a no-go item for me, even if the plane does not have anti-ice or de-ice systems on it. But I've got to be sure that I can, um, that I can stay clear of the clouds. Tom Horn literally wrote the book on aviation weather. Now, he advises a detailed look at cloud bases and tops and making sure I have clear air for my descent into Frederick. Pie reps are super helpful. Now, they're only a couple for my route, but they do confirm the forecasts. And the TAFs predict broken coverage, so I should have a way down. And so I launch. Once I'm over the mountains, it's a solid undercast, and there's likely ice in those clouds. So am I taking an undue risk? You know, if we're over out icy clouds, you know, if it's mountain obscuration from clouds, and it's like you have an engine failure, you're going to descend into the clouds, into the mountains. You know, that's, the, that's, the, that's just as bad as night. But it's like it's definitely, you know, we shouldn't kill ourselves. It's definitely a higher risk situation than, um, than flying in good weather in the daytime. Well, I have terrain view and synthetic vision on board, and there are decent ceilings in the valleys, so... I'm willing to accept the risk. And when I get to Frederick, the weather is better than forecast, so the letdown is really a non-event. There's so many mysteries about icing, and when, you know, when it shows up and when it doesn't is strange. You know, you can have conditions that would seem conducive to icing. You can be right around freezing and flying in moisture and not get icing. A lot of times you'll be on, on a cold winter day um, the precipitation will already be frozen. You know, you'll be flying in snow, and it's like, great, that doesn't accumulate. Um, you know, that doesn't give me pause. But, um, but then, you know, there's, there's certain times when, um, when you'll see that the, the, the temperatures um, are really cold. You know, they'll be uh, 20 degrees or below, and you'll think, you know, this, this liquid, any liquid that's in the clouds can't possibly be... Um, or any clouds can't possibly be liquid because they're way below freezing. And yet, that's some of the times you get the, the very worst ice is, is um, you know, this, you get this, this, uh, this really super cooled water that hasn't yet frozen, but then when it touches the, uh, you know, touches your airplane, it freezes right away. But there is one decision I regret. I couldn't get the airplane in a hangar, so I had to have it de-iced. You don't want to know how much that cost. Warren Morningstar, AOPA Live.